Mac B, Kids Spy, Mac Undercover. Chapter 5 Her Majesty. I turned around. It was the Queen of England. I recognized her face right away from the money. The Queen of England was surrounded by twelve corgis who nipped at one another's tails. She was wearing a purple dress and a hat of the same color. Feathers from several exotic birds poked up from the brim. I bowed because that seemed like something you should do when you come to a queen face to face with a queen. She frowned. I knelt because it seemed like my bow had not been enough. She smiled. Please rise, said the queen. She held out a tin. Would you like a biscuit? A biscuit. She took the tin and smiled. I reached out and tried one. The biscuit tasted like, pap tasted like paper and dried out my mouth. Delicious, isn't it? said the queen. Here is a fun fact, which you in America call cookies, we English call biscuits. This isn't a cookie, I said. Cookies are sweet. They have stuff that tastes good, like chocolate chips. The queen frowned. Then what do you call biscuits? We call them biscuits, and we feed them to dogs. I see, said the queen. She put the lid on the tin and put the tin in her handbag. How was your flight? It was awful. Someone stole my Game Boy. I don't know what that is. Oh, I said. It's a handheld video game console. Nintendo makes them. I am of the general belief that video games are rubbish, said the Queen. Actually, they're pretty fun. And a lot of them are like little stories, like Mario. He's a plumber by day. Let me give you some advice. When people ask you how your flight was, they are looking for a short answer, like good or long. They are certainly not asking to hear stories about plumbers or misplaced Game Boys. It wasn't misplaced. It was stolen. Don't you think it might be related to the theft of the crown jewels? I gestured to a case full of treasures. Also, I thought you said someone had stolen the crown jewels. I did. But? I gestured to the case again. But what? There are a bunch of jewels in here. Mac, there are 140 objects in the crown jewels. They weren't all stolen. I see. I put out a notebook so I could take down a description. So, what was stolen? My spoon, said the queen. Your what? My spoon, said the queen. I started laughing. I could tell from the queen's face that I shouldn't laugh, so I stopped. The room was quiet. The queen cleared her throat. I bowed again, just to be safe. And then I said, tell me more about this spoon. This spoon is quite special. It is used in the coronation of kings and queens. It is called, said the queen, the coronation spoon. Good name. The coronation spoon has been in the royal collection for more than 800 years. That's an old spoon. Indubitably, said the queen. It is made of silver and covered in gold. It is engraved with, engraved with leafy scrolls in the faces of monsters. Four freshwater pearls are mounted in the stem. I wrote this down. How big is it? It measures ten inches. That's a long spoon. Indubitably, said the queen. I set down my pencil. Look, this seems like a really nice spoon. Indubitably. But why the big fuss? It's a spoon. I shall tell you a story, said the queen, for more than 1,000 years. Oh boy, I said. Chapter 6. King and Queen Stuff. For more than 1,000 years, said the queen, there has been a king on, on, or queen on the throne of England, except for a brief interregnum. Interregnum? I said. From the Latin, said the queen. You do not speak Latin? I have an A in Spanish. Hmm, said the queen. Inter, meaning in between. Regnum, meaning reign. Four hundred years ago, there was a little break between kings. Why? England has civil war. One side fought for Ch King Charles I, and one side was against him. Things did not end well for the king. What happened? Regicide? Regicide? The queen sighed. Oh. From the Latin, reg meaning king, side meaning kill. Regicide, I said. Yes, said the queen. It is my least 
favorite type of side. This is dark, I said. This is history, said the queen. King Charles I was executed. For 11 years, the K England had no king. A man named Oliver Cromwell had named himself Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Cromwell hated kings. He hated queens, and he hated fun. He shut down the theaters. He outlawed pretty dresses. Instead of feasting on Christmas, people fasted. Instead, if Game Boys had been invented, he would have taken those away too. A terrible man. But you just said video games are rubbish. There's considerable difference between believing something is rubbish and not believing that it should than believing that it should not exist, said the Queen. Remember that. I never forgot it. It was like the whole country got grounded, I said. Here's Cromwell, Lord Protector and Major Party Pooper. Some of the stuff Cromwell hated, kings, queens, buns, part. fun, fun, pretty dresses, Christmas feasts, probably Game Boys, and theaters. Indeed, times were grim. For money, Cromwell melted the crown jewels. He sold off the gold, the silver, and the gems to fill his own coffers. Every crown, every scepter, every sword was, disappoint dis was destroyed. Only one thing survived. The spoon. The spoon. When the King Charles II returned to the English throne, he ordered his goldsmiths and jewelers to remake the lost treasures. Some of those replicas stand behind you now. Now King and King Charles II tracked down the spoon, and when he was crowned, a bishop used it to pour oil on his hand. What? King and Queen stuff. Okay. You ask why this spoon is so valuable. What do people want more than anything else? Tradition. The spoon may be only ten inches long, but it reaches all the way to England's misty past, through times that were dark and times that were glorious, and my goodness, your handwriting is terrible. I've been writing this all down, and the queen was now looking over my shoulder. I'm working on that, as you should be. What does that say? It says glorious. I can't tell if that's a G or a Q. You need to put a little curve on the bottom of your stems. My mom always tells me that, too, I said. She is right. Okay, I said. I'm going to search this place for, for clues. There is no need. I already know who took my spoon. You do? Yes. Was it the KGB? The KGB, said the queen. This seemed exactly like something the KGB would do. No, it was not the KGB. It was the president of France. He left a note. The queen reached under a handbook and took out an envelope. She handed it to me and I opened it. Wow, I said, the president of France has some terrible handwriting too. Some of these letters are backwards. So what? So even if I do have terrible handwriting, I could grow up to be president. Yes, said the queen, of France. What's that supposed to mean? Just read the letter, said the queen. You stuck your tongue out at the president of France? Dear your majesty, I snuck into the Tower of London and stole your spoon, and you will never get it back. This will teach you not to stick your tongue out at me the next time we have lunch. Ha ha, the President of France. You. I thought his back was turned. Hmm. He was being rude. Okay. In any case, said the Queen, I thought you might want to take the hovercraft to France tonight and fetch my spoon. Okay. Do I get any spy gear? Spy gear? Yeah, like James Bond. The Queen sniffed. Mac, James Bond is a made-up character in a made-up story. This is totally real life. Oh, right. Of course you get spy gear. She reached into her giant handbag and removed a pair of what looked like ordinary sunglasses. These may look like ordinary sunglasses, but they are in fact night vision spectacles. Wear them and you can see in the dark. But won't I look funny wearing sunglasses at night? Not if you have confidence. Confidence. She reached into her handbag again and pulled out a box. This is a secret identity kit. You won't be able to check into a hotel or drive a car if people think you are a kid. Fake mustaches, fake nose, passports, wigs. Your name is Hugh Anthony Craig III. 
and you are a piano tuner from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Got that? But aren't I a little short to be an adult? Yes, I did expect you to be taller. I'm the shortest boy in my class. Well, confidence. People won't ask you about your height, probably. It's rude. Okay. Of course, there are a lot of rude people in France. The other hand, there are a lot of short people in France, so you should be all right. Hmm. Here is a top secret report on the president of France. It may contain information vital to your mission. But most of these words are blacked out. Yes, it's redacted. The best information is always blacked out of top secret reports. It's top secret. But this is unreadable. Finally, I will loan you one of my dogs to take on your mission. You may select your favorite. Corgis, line up. The queen's dogs stopped nipping at one another's tails and arranged themselves into a tidy line shoulder to shoulder. I studied them carefully. Are these dogs trained assassins? I asked. Of course not. How dreadful. Are they robots? I asked. Don't be ridiculous. Then why are you giving me one? Loaning you one, said the queen. The life of a spy is lonely. It's nice to have company. That one, I said, when I pointed to the little dog on the end. Freddy, said the queen, but Freddy is a runt. That's what everyone calls me at school. Freddy, said the queen. No, runt, I said. Ah, said the queen. She picked Freddy up and placed him in my arms. He began licking my face. No licking, Freddy. Freddy kept licking. Well, said the queen, you'd better get going. The hovercraft leaves soon. Freddy and I walked to the door, but I had one more question. Just one more question, I said. Oh, for goodness sake. How long do you think this mission will take? As long as it takes. Why? It's just that this weekend, Derek Lafoy is having a karate birthday party. The queen gave me a serious look. And were you invited to Derek Lafoy's karate birthday party? No, but good luck on your mission, said the queen.